His Excellency the President, he already stands at the podium. From the podium, let's welcome His Excellency the President of the Republic of Liberia, Ambassador Joseph Yuma Walker. Here he comes. <laughs> The Vice President, allow me to recognize the President of the South, Vice President Surya, who is here with a message to my friend and brother, the President Julia Mar Mara Dio, the President of the Sister Republic of Church, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> We are thankful to the Lord Almighty, the preserver of our state, for his abundant blessings upon us. As the world confronts various crises, wars, pandemics, climate change, and migration, we pray for better, more peaceful, sustainable, and inclusive global order. Exactly one week ago, Vice President Jeremiah Kuhn and I took the oath of office as an array of the world leaders, friends, and citizens of Liberia, the home and in the diaspora look on. That solemn occasion marked another historical moment in our democracy as we carried out the transfer of power. In obedience to our constitutional duty, it is an honor to come before this august body, the people's representative, to report on the national situation as we met it and present our agenda for developing in the coming year. We must acknowledge the harsh reality that faces us as we report that the state of our nation is not what we desire. It is important to note problems that confront us. Poverty, drug epidemic, corruption, poor infrastructure, and an underperforming economy. The current challenges present as a unique opportunity to embark on a new journey of hope. This is our commitment to rescue the nation. Our vision. <laughs> our vision as revealed in arrest. A R R E S T meaning agriculture, roads, rule of law, education, sanitation, and tourism. <laughs> Shall guide the preparation of our new medium-term national development plan. For the welfare of our people, we must harness opportunities in agriculture, roads, and other infrastructure development, improve the rule of law, rethink the education sector, improve sanitation, and unlock the potential of tourism. We believe that creating economic linkages between these development facets and reinforcing them will help revise the years of economic downturn. The state of the economy. The state of the economy is a cause for concern. With many of our citizens facing perennial unemployment and economic instability, we must not just recognize the pain and frustration that permeate our society, but also work together to introduce and pass legislation that will prioritize economic reforms and foster sustainable economic growth and job creation. Yeah. 
distinguished legislators, economic growth flow between 2022 and 2023 from 4.8% to 4.6%. The rate of growth averaged about 1.5% compared with 3.1% between 2012 and 2017, due in part to an underperforming economy and existing geopolitical global environment. During the past six years, the economy faced challenges in terms of growth, job creation, and poverty reduction. Inflation during the period 2023 rose to 10.1% at the end of December from 7.6% in 2022. Revenue collection as reported for 2023 stood at 710.23 million US dollars, while expenditure total 796.32 million hence a large budget deficit of, of over $18 million. We intend to change the state of the economy by thinking outside the box. A paradigm shift away from relying on our primary commodity export to focusing on value addition with the private sector as the engine to drive the economy. <laughs> Under my administration, the empowerment of the Liberian entrepreneurship through more support will help bring back the Made in Liberia quest for inclusive and sustainable growth and jobs. In our quest to expand the economy, we encourage information communication technology, ICT, and the job creation, especially for the youth. To achieve this, my administration will train up to 10,000 young people in various in digital skills in the first half of 2024. Nigerian middle class goal must be a reality in the next six years. The next net international international reverse position reported at the end of December 2023 was $220 million. The report of US $40 million as the GOL's consolidated account balance as of January 3, 2019, 2024 is not supported by the fact. The balance reported by the CDA as of the same date was 20.5 million, highly incumbent, not 40 million dollars. To this end, we will re-emphasize our early commitment to audit and show that regular audits will be a culture across all countries. <laughs> regular audit will be a culture across all branches of government, not only the executive. <laughs> the stock of public debt at the end of December, 2023 stood at $2.21 $2 billion, an increase of 8.67% compared to the end of December 2022, stock of $2.08 billion. This represents a sharp increase of $1.33 billion compared to the end of December 2017, stock of $8.17 million representing 601.8% rise. Our debt burden has clearly grown astronomically 
suddenly the rescue mission was necessary was necessary for Liberia's transformation. As I am speaking, Liberia is under sanction for lack of payment of dues to the African Union and the African Development Bank. Also, the default in the payment of about 650000 to the European Investment Bank is preventing the disbursement of $13 million for Sanibuya Lugato Road. We will reintroduce the fiscal rules and travel ordinance in addition to our measures to help address waste and abuse and ensure the return of prudent fiscal management who will ensure that the executive leads by the example. <laughs> Agriculture. Liberia is now with abundant natural resources. With over 40% of West Africa's rainforest, our country is home to a diverse array of flora and fauna that should help provide economic and agricultural growth opportunities. Liberia is also a leader in the discussion on climate change mitigation. For emphasizing the importance of international partnership for sustainable agricultural production and development. However, it is important to recognize that our available arable land is underutilized. My government is committed to harnessing the right resources, strengthening collaboration with international partners and local farmers to improve production. <laughs> Legislative agenda. Our legislative agenda is aimed at working with you in doing the business of the people for which proposed legislation will be submitted in coming months. We will focus on shaping the outcome for desired by a new development agenda. The following constitute the development agenda. The Presidential Transaction Transition Act. The Presidential Transition Act was drafted in 2017 to provide the appropriate and legal framework for seamless transition from one democratically elected president to the other. The draft bill has seen been lingering with little or no action, action to move it to legislation. Given the difficulty in establishing the appropriate framework to guide the recent presidential transition, my government will immediately review the draft bill for submission to the legislative passage. <laughs> when passed, the Presidential Transition Act will provide a legal basis for smooth transfer of the local power. Bill for the establishment of the Ministry of Local Government. This bill is aimed at advancing modalities to operationalize the Local Government Act passed in 2018 to fast track the transitioning of the Ministry of Internal Affairs to the new Ministry of Local Government. The Ministry of Local Government will have the authority to drive the government to decentralization program operationalizing the revenue sharing law. The revenue sharing law needs to be synchronized with existing laws, including the Project Financial Management Act, PFMA, and the current revenue code. The revenue sharing law passed in 2022, and these two order instruments were designed for different systems of government. While the new Revenue Sharing Act is designed to facilitate fiscal decentralization in a decentralized system of governance, the other two cater to a centralized system 
where the sub-national bodies do not have any authority to use a portion of locally generated revenue. This has left county service centers that should be functioning and raising revenue, often struggling to raise operational costs. We will work with the relevant institutions of government to align the new law with the existing law, popularize the law, and ensure adherence and enforcement across the country. The passage of the National Tourism Bill. One of the major recommendations that came up of the mandate and functional review of the Ministry of Information, Culture, Affairs, and Tourism was the need to divest culture and tourism from the Ministry of Information. The National Tourism Bill has since been sent to the legislature with a first public hearing. Improving tourism is one of the pillars of the arrest agenda. We will work to the legislature on the status of the bill pending necessary action to complete the process. Once passed, Liberia will have a National Tourism Authority mandated to draw regulations and appropriate governing framework for tourism sector. <laughs> Establishment of the Office of Ambassador. Passage of the Code of Conduct for public officials have not had the full effect of the law. A major hurdle is a lack of implementation infrastructure. To this end, there is a need to re-establish the Office of Ombudsman. When established, this office will supervise and enforce all provisions of the Code of Conduct and will also impose sanctions for infractions. <laughs> we must begin looking at appointing an individual with a requisite moral standing to head and run the office. Amendment to the New Financial Institution Act. As part of the CBL financial sector reform in 2023, the bank submitted to the office of the president a new banking law to replace the existing New Financial Act of 1999. The act was submitted to the National Legislature for enactment, but is still pending passage. In the coming days, my administration will work with the leadership of the legislature to ensure the New Banking Act is passed into law. Amendment and Resettled Payment Act System Act. An amendment and Resettled Payment System Act is currently being viewed by my administration. The act, when passed into law, will help strengthen the means of mobile payments across platforms and enhance the drive towards cashless society. <laughs> Liberia Assurance Insurance Regulatory Commission Act. The Central Bank of Liberia is working on a draft Liberia Insurance Regulatory Commission Act, which is currently being shared with stakeholders for their input, following which it will be submitted to pass it into law. We are also working on a draft bill for the National Health Insurance Scheme for Liberia. <laughs> This scheme is intended to reduce out-of-pocket costs for citizens and have access to affordable and quality health care. <laughs> the Paris Agreement, 2015 Paris Agreement. The threat 
of climate change to our environment and the way of life is becoming obvious by the day, which is why we must join the rest of the world to address the causes of this phenomenon. I call on the legislature to work with us to begin looking at the Paris Agreement, including the carbon market, to ensure our national interest is protected. The list of protocols, conventions, and other instruments will be forwarded to you for consideration and appropriate action. Road infrastructure development. Expanding and improving road network in our country remains a top priority for our administration. While there has been some progress in the road transport sector during the review period, there remain considerable challenges in the road development. Mr. Vice President, Senator, Speaker, the Honorable Legislature, ladies and gentlemen, the total paved road on our national network amount to 100 and 100, I mean 1,131 one kilometer, representing 8.7% of the 13,000 kilometer road network we need. This track underscores considerable challenges in road infrastructure and the urgent need to fund road development in our country. With associate assistance from friendly partners, the country made notable progress in paving some primary roads, including the corridors, the Banga to Salaye, the Ganta to Sakripi, the Ganta to Yekipa, and the Sanigui to Rugati. In addition, as of now, 37.7% of work on the ELB to our IA road project has been accomplished. To access all county capitals, my government will work to alleviate the problem faced by commuters using this primary roads, especially during the rainy season. The situation also causes major impediments to the economic development of our people. At these primary routes, are major economic corridors to all parts of the country. The restoration of county road maintenance station will be a key deliverable. <laughs> this is why we have commissioned a no car stop in the mall one day deliverable. <laughs> All major primary roads private. Our flagship road delivery program will include the free port to the St. Paul Greek Road. <laughs> Having received funding through the government of Japan, we'll begin construction of a four-lane road from the Gabriel Tokka Bridge to the free port of Monrovia. <laughs> Additionally, the government of Japan is expected to provide funds to expand the Gabriel Tucker Bridge to four lanes. The government has also secured additional support from Japan for the conduct of feasibility study for the expansion of the free port to St. Paul Bridge Corridor. My government will allocate funds to complete the 6.5 kilometer free port to St. Paul Bridge Corridor. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, and I'm pro honorable legislators, my government will ensure the funding from the National Road Fund 
is people are to maintain and rehabilitate roads for the good of our public. Through the, through the contribution of Liberia, Liberians who pay their fuel levies from every gallon of gasoline or fuel or the purchase, we will continue to expand what the maintenance program in maintaining our existing network and the construction of new community roads. The Honorable Legislatures, I would like you to join me in extending sincere gratitude to our development partners, which include the European Union, the European Investment Bank, the World Bank, the United States Agency for International Development, the UK Aid, the German government, KFW, and GIZ. I would like to also thank our Arab partners, including the Saudi Fund, the Kuwait Fund, Badir, as well as the Japanese government in Jakarta, the Swedish government, the Chinese government, and this China aid program, the Norwegian government, the Indian government, the African Environment Bank, the FDB, and ECOWAS, for their many contributions to our infrastructure development. <laughs> foreign, policy, foreign policy. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, Madam President Pro Chamber, members of the legislature, as a founding member of the most continental and multilateral institution, we will continue to honor our obligations. Liberia continues to foster cordial relationship with other countries in the community of nations and maintains its current membership with multilateral organizations like the United Nations, ECOWAS, Mono River Union, and the African Union. We will continue to pursue a policy of good neighborliness as we remain in peaceful coexistence with our immediate neighbors. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, Madam Pro Chamber, Honorable Legislatures. As a nation with a proud history of regional leadership, our standing among the community of nations is undermined when we fail to meet our obligation as a sovereign state. Therefore, it is imperative to reclaim our standing in the community of nations. My government. <laughs> My government will work with the legislature to ensure arrears are settled. <laughs> the civil service. There's an estimated 70,000 employees, including appointed officials in the government of Liberia. These command a total weight is of 300 million annually. The group in the size of government has not been proportional to the growth in the revenue and the efficiency and effectiveness of our government. This means that wage continue to consume a sizable portion of the total budget, strangulating service delivery in all initiated and obligations of the government. So, the government faces the situation stunted growth and non-investment in the lives of the people. To make the government more effective and efficient, we must focus on public service delivery. The people, not the government, must come first. <laughs> Health. Health and sanitation remain a major priority of our government. 
In the health sector, my government will prioritize the following. The availability of need needed medical supplies and logistics in all public health institutions throughout the length and breadth of the nation. <laughs> Regular, efficient, and robust monitoring and evaluation of health services in the country to accelerate the reduction of maternal and newborn mortality. <laughs> of regional diagnostic centers, regulation of health care and pharmaceutical institutions in the country in this international community. Our recent experience in Ebola and COVID-19 requires our full support in treating national public health with utmost importance in Liberia as it relates to emergency preparedness and response. This requires a more coordinated way of building a more resilient health infrastructure to address current health challenges and future health shock. Honorable legislatures, the drug epidemic, especially the use of Kush. <laughs> These are pushed in our country is a substantial threat, easing away the future of our children and the country. We must stand up and face this national security risk together. Given the need for immediate action to make good, my play to the thousands of families burdened by this crisis, I am here by declaring drug and substance abuse as a public health emergency. In this direction, I am establishing a multi-sectorial steering committee comprising the following agencies. The Minister of Health will chair Minister of Justice, co-chair, Minister of Human Sport member, Minister of Gender, Children, Social Protection member, Liberia Drug Enforcement Agency member, Minister of Finance and Development Planning member. In this fight, me and my vice president will be the first to take drug tests. <laughs>
to invest in education infrastructure and provide adequate resources. In this, we create your support. Good governors, honorable legislators, our con commitment to good governance is unwavering. Transparency, accountability, the rule of law will guide our actions. We will fight, we will fight corruption and build institutions that serve our people's interests. A government, a government that is accountable to its citizens is a government that can truly serve the needs of its people. Mm -hmm. Mr. Vice President, the President of the Senate, the Speaker, members of the legislature, our justice system is meant to protect the innocent and punish the guilty. I've been mired by inefficiency, corruption, and lack of public trust. I am counting on this honorable body to pass effective legislation and support financial appropriation that will help us to win the fight against corruption. Anyone caught in an act of corruption will fail the full weight of the law with swish and non-discriminatory enforcement. <laughs> Democratic elections. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, Madam President Pro Chamber, and Honorable Legislatures, we have had a successive peaceful transfer of power, establishing our credentials in emerging, emerging democracy following the Civil War. But while we proudly celebrate this achievement, we are not oblivious to the battlements <coughs> that regularly attend our elections and mark the electoral process. One of the vexing problems we noted during our past election is voter registration and the associated logistic, the logistical problem. We tend to frustrate and anger voters and political parties. My government will strengthen the national identification registry to build a needed capacity to be able to capture the comprehensive biometric data needed to be all agencies included the National Election Commission. In addition, my government will begin to review and implement the electoral reform laws. The last word. Mr. President of the Senate, Mr. Speaker, members of the legislature, our Liberian brothers and sisters in the diaspora are an integral part of this nation. They are the extension of our national pride. They share in our nation's happiness and sadness. They are readily responsive to the needs of family members and friends in times of difficulty. Liberians in the diaspora have a stake in the future of Liberia, and my administration will, will be intentional about ensuring that their stake in Liberia is fully honored. I have therefore proposed an annual diaspora conference on the national development. I commend the acts of the 50th Foot Legislature and the past administration for their action to remove the unfair burden of citizenship against Liberians who have chosen to explore opportunities in other parts of the world. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm glad that the slogan, once Liberian, always Liberian, and I have to mean We will establish a clear and predictable policy that link where diaspora Liberians can play more meaningful roles in the Liberian future. The nation lost some of the prominent citizens during the year in review. Special condolences go to the families of the victims of the time cut explosion in Turkey, Bound County. Among those who have joined our ancestors are former Assistant Minister Mr. Victor Daniel Kweku, 90 years, Ambassador Hannah Abiru Boyan Jones, 89 years, Commissioner James Joe McGill, Senior, 86 years, Deputy Minister Dr. Edward Ingba Goba, 78 years, Senator Daniel Nathan of Bapul County, and former the former Deputy Speaker, Hans Dachu of Grand Bassett County. We also mourn all those who lost their lives during the just ended legislative presidential election. A fuller list will be published. Mr. Vice President, Mr. Speaker, and Pro Tem, and honorable members of the legislature. The seat the state of our nation is in distress, but the hope of our people is alive. <laughs> we have all it takes to have overcome the burden we have imposed on ourselves through greed and corruption. When we work together, there is nothing we cannot overcome as a people. This is why I ask all of you, you representative of our people, to join me to do the business of the Liberian people by not doing business as usual. The, the time for mindset shift is now. We must be selfless in our service to bring about the change the Liberian people are yearning for. Again, I challenge you to join me to think Liberia, love Liberia, and do it. I will thank you, and God bless the words of our hands, and save the state.
Fox de Saoulaitou. Le premier mot de l'histoire de l'Ukraine à John Chambers of the National Legislature, where Liberia is my president. Joseph Newman Boyka just delivered his first State of the Nation address in keeping with Article 58 of the Liberian Constitution, allowing his legislative agenda to the people of Liberia through their respective representatives and senators. My name is Obidaya Johnson. Say thanks to you for watching. Yeah.